early 1960s. By Leicester University Engineering Building, James Sterling and James Gowan answered a question that no one knew was even being asked. What should post-war modern architecture look like? The building is a castle of red and silver. Red is for brick and tile that trapped almost all concrete surfaces. Recording academy and warehouse in 19th century. Silver is for opaque, translucent or transparent glass, as an industrial element, a trope of modernism. Sterling used this vocabulary on two sequels, while Gowan, reluctant to repeat it, ended their partnership. Despite its expressive images, Leicester is grounded in realities of function and structure. The building can be broken into two chunks, the tower complex and the workshop. The tower complex is a collection of multiple volumetric pieces, direct enough to express their functions. Office tower is a chamfered box with patent glazing, capped by a water tank for hydraulic experiments. Lab tower has banded windows, angled to exclude drafts. Equipment can be lifted directly into it. As circulation requirements diminish, landings in service towers get smaller upwards and its envelope decreases. Podium and theatres, totally covered by bricks and tiles, provide enclosed space for lavatories and lecture halls. Unlike the tower portion, workshop is more or less monolithic. It's a low-slung shed, with a four-story block at the edge. Its wavy glassy roof is the most iconic visual element, which is especially beautiful as it glows white when lit at night. Let's see how it formed. At its core, workshop is not a static thing. Aside from the columns that create 6 by 10 20 feet square bays, all partitions are removable. Cranes are attached under beams to move materials between heavy machineries that are placed on ground floor. Less heavily serviced labs and multi-height facilities are arranged at rear. Machinery can be lifted through floor openings of overhang. The brief requested a north light only, so walls are windowless and roof is saw-toothed. Because it's impossible to arrange workshop on north-south axis, the roof is turned to run diagonally across the plan. At first trusses were in the same grid with columns, sitting on perimeter wall with a serrated edge of flat triangles. Then Gowan rotated it to align with roof corrugations, and raised it to sit on triangular struts that sloped down to wall head. At last, top cords were removed and trusses were sliced at right angle, ending with diamonds. The roof is tightly articulated around the edge like a tablecloth. Gowan referred to his student, Edward Reynolds' work on the notion of membrane and bones. Originally the tablecloth was draped between trusses, but later the trusses were inclined as folded plate framework, so the glazing can be fixed directly to structure. Though appear identical at a distance, panels on north and south sides are different. North is real being of a ply glass whose inner layer is fiberglass. South is blind, with an aluminum sheet inserted to restrict light exposure. Over a century ago, Crystal Palace first astonished visitors with its clear walls and ceilings, requiring no artificial lights. Innovation of glass canopy continues, with advanced forms and techs. Things under it changed as well. Old machineries were pulled out, replaced by more efficient ones and simulation experiments. Research diversified as engineering evolved. Accordingly, labs became more specific and compact, more partitions even mezzanines were added and rarely removed. This is why we are gonna make waves. The new form starts with perimeter walls too. As original roof is mainly affected by plan, this time we use elevation to change it. By adding concave and convex to the walls and connecting them by diagonal lines, a ruled surface is generated. Despite the benefit of uniformity had already been exploited, the new form suggests another kind of flexibility with diversified sections, and the tablecloth will spread on this new wavy table. 
columns are elevated to support curved beams over old ones and cranes. These curves match bottom cords of new trusses as before. Mezzanines are added to places with enough clearance, basically where they are needed most. To follow the original logic, order of roof generation is slightly different. First, lift diamonds to new positions on wall head. Second, connect pairs of them to produce new ridges and converted trusses. Third, cut trusses at right angle to get actual ends. Last, frame remaining surfaces to find struts. Put each layer back in sequence and the new roof is formed. Elevation now looks like a flow of stop motion. The once universal space trades part of its flexibility for capability of a program-driven interior. The building is also distinguished for its capacity to invoke metaphorical reference. Marine theme is one of them. From the start, students saw themselves aboard the SS Sterling. Now the ship sailed from calm sea to rough sea from golden age to a time full of hope and uncertainty.